Here's everything that you need to know to make your Wanderer feel like a god. My full written guide that goes far more in depth is in the pinned comment. For Wanderer's talents, you want to prioritize crowning his auto attack, then burst. His skill is less important and can be left around level 8, but over time you do want to crown it eventually, as every damage increase is important on Wanderer. Wanderer's ideal combo varies depending on a few factors. If you have 20% more normal attack speed than charged attack speed, if you're using Tule Tula, or if you're using Yunjin, or using Echoes, or have a C6 Wanderer, then you will always want to do a normal attack combo. With a normal attack combo, it is also a DPS gain to implement the A4 dashes, ideally using them after a N2 or N3 as available. But keep in mind, depending on the enemies you are facing, you will want to hold on to the A4 dashes for when you need to dodge enemy attacks. If you don't meet any of the aforementioned criteria, then you will want to do N2C instead. Depending on the enemies, Wanderer's charged attack can ungroup them, so sometimes in AoE, you will want to stick to normal attack spam, even if you don't meet any of the criteria for the combo. Also keep in mind with charged attack combos, that you get your A4 up less frequently, so it may be harder to reliably dodge. Wanderer's ideal weapon options change depending on if you are using him with Farina or not. If you aren't using Farina, his best weapon is Tule Tula's by a pretty good margin, followed by Lost Prayers, Cashflow, Woodsith, Tomb, Kagura, and Memory of Dust, if shielded. There's no point in using any other weapon other than these, as everything else is behind an all one Woodsith, which most players should have. If you are using Farina, Tule Tula's is still his best weapon, but Cashflow and Tomb are only slightly behind. Flowing Purity also becomes a viable F2P option if you do not want to use Woodsith, if using Cash Flow or Lost Prayers, you will want to avoid using Marishuse Hunter as you will overcap on crit rate with it. For the artifact sets, if you are using Farina, then Marishuse Hunter will be his best set, unless you're using a crit rate weapon. If you aren't using Farina, then DPC is his best set, followed by Echoes, 2 piece, 2 piece, SR, and 4 VV. If you don't have Green Ping, or if you're using a build or weapon that wants to do charged attacks, then Echoes should not be used. SR is not recommended as it harms rotational flexibility by preventing Wanderer from using his burst at the start of his steal time, and the energy drain can make it hard to burst every rotation without building excessive energy recharge. 4VV is only slightly behind 2 piece 2 piece, so if you are using a sub DPS that can benefit from it, then it can be used. However, you should be aiming to get Meira Shusei Hunter, DPC, or Echoes over time. For the main stats, use Attack Sands, Anemo Goblet, and Crit Circlet. If using Farina and not Bennett, then Attack a Goblet can be used instead of Anemo. Substats focus on Crit, then Attack. If you're using Meira Shusei Hunter, Crit Damage and Attack Percent should both be prioritized above Crit Rate, since Wanderer already ascends with Crit Rate. Energy Recharge should not be a priority, as Wanderer needs little to no ER and doesn't always need to burst every rotation. But, if you want to be safe, aim for no more than about 124%. When it comes to Wanderer's teams, his most important teammate is by far a C6 Farazan. She can be used before C6 if you have at least C2, but you need to prioritize getting her to C6 as it makes a monumental difference. Then, you'll want a second main buffer, which will be either Farina or Bennett. Farina provides excellent buffing and some DPS damage, which makes all part of Wanderer's highest damaging teams. One thing to keep in mind, however, is that a C0 Farina's buffing is backloaded as it ramps up over the full rotation. She also takes quite a bit of build time, so while she is part of Wanderer's highest damaging teams, that doesn't necessarily mean she will always result in the fastest clear times. If using Farina, the fourth slot will be a healer, ideally Bennett. Although you get less fanfare with Bennett than other healers, his own buffing is so massive that he is still the highest damaging option. And when using Bennett with Farina, after cast casting his burst, if he needs to get healed, you want to wait about half a second before swapping off of him so that he heals himself. You can also cast Far Farazan inside Bennett's burst so that she gets healed. And Wanderer still gets great uptime on Bennett's buff, 
As long as he uses burst at the end, since it will snapshot the buff. If you do not want to use Bennett, Jean C4 is the next best option, as she provides valuable attack speed and massive anima resistance shred. With how many highly anima resistant enemies are often in the abyss, Jean will often be better than Bennett. Charlotte is a solid option thanks to her off-field AoE choir application applying freeze. Having freeze can be extremely helpful in AoE to keep enemies grouped and prevent them from attacking. She can also provide buffing through thrilling tails and also allow Wanderer to get cryo A1 for another 20% crit rate. Keep in mind that Charlotte will need very high energy recharge to burst every rotation. And the last healer option to consider is Mika. Like Charlotte, he also allows Wanderer to get cryo A1. However, he does not provide off-field cryo application, so you will not have freeze. Instead, he provides a large attack speed buff. In addition to being a great buff to Wanderer's damage, this also allows Wanderer to get his A4 up extremely consistently, making dodging far easier and more consistent. Keep in mind that with Mika, you will not get Cryo A1 against enemies that can't be frozen, such as Barsis. And the Cryo A1 is a massive part of Mika's value, so he won't be great in those scenarios. Now, if you aren't using Farina, then your team card will be Wanderer, Farazan, Bennett, and a flexible fourth slot. The fourth slot will be an, either another buffer, a sub DPS, or a shielder. You'll want to use whatever is best for the specific content you are facing. For buffers, Yunjin is an excellent option with all the buffs she provides to normal attacks. She gains a good amount of value with her constellations, especially C6, but she can still be used even at a lower constellation. As a Geo unit, Yunjin will also create a few crystallized shards, which will protect Wanderer from getting interrupted by about one or two attacks. That is very often all you will need, so Yunjin can act as a sort of mini shielder while still providing massive buffing. Keep in mind that her buff falls off in AoE, so she is primarily a good option for single target. If you just so happen to have a C2 Kui, she is a phenomenal buffer. She will provide Pyro Resonance, Thrilling Tails, and a 23% defense shred, and she only needs one second of fill time to do this, allowing for extremely fast setups. This makes her the highest damaging option, but keep in mind she may not perform as well in multi-wave scenarios, as the next wave of enemies may spawn away from her bombs and not have their defense reduced. Jean C4 is still great for her attack speed and resistance shred, but keep in mind she also has a similar issue as Klee, with enemies possibly spawning or moving outside of her burst and not having their resistance shred. But again, with how many anemia resistant enemies are constantly in the, in the abyss, Jean C4 will very often be an excellent option. Now for sub DPS options, Venti is phenomenal for AoE. Venti will be buffed by Farazan and Bennett, allowing him to do good AoE sub-DPS damage, while also providing incredible grouping. Wanderer's charged attack deals massive poise damage, so he can easily break enemies' poise to allow Venti to pull them much easier. Wanderer's attacks can hit all enemies lifted by Venti, and the grouping lasts for the majority of Wanderer's field time, so this team can absolutely shred enemies apart in AoE content with groupable enemies. On top of that, enemies inside Venti's boss will constantly get staggered and not be able to attack, allowing you to not have to worry about getting interrupted. All of these factors combined make Venti an incredible unit to have in your arsenal for Wanderer. What Venti provides is not always needed, but when he shines, he is superb. Kazuha can also be used for grouping instead of Venti. However, he takes much more field time than Venti, and his grouping is not continuous, so Venti will usually be better, but Kazuha is still a great option. Other good sub-DPS options include Yelan, Fischl, Lynette, Rosaria, and Jungling. Lynette is unique in that she provides a taunt. The taunt is not only useful for allowing you to easily evade enemy attacks, but can also cause melee enemies to, to run over to the taunt and essentially group themselves. So Lynette is a solid option if you want both a means of interruption avoidance and grouping at the same time. Just know that she is not the best at either of these and her taunt does not work against Barsis. Yaelan provides good damage, decent buffing, and just like Farina, she provides Hydro A1 for all the utility that comes with that. Xingxiao provides Hydro A1 just like Yaelan. He does less damage, but he provides a lot more Hydro application, and this can be very useful if you're fighting enemies like Pyro Electors where you really want a lot of Pyro application to break those shields. Vishal doesn't provide any additional utility, she simply does a lot of single target damage, as Wanderer is good at driving her C6 and A4. And since she is Electro, if you happen to be using SR, 
then the energy one orb will get from his Electro A1 will allow you to be able to burst every rotation, even with SR. Rosaria doesn't do the most damage in the world, but she massively buffs Wanderer's crit rate through her own buff and his Cryo A1. Jungling has good damage for both AoE and sub DPS while providing Pyro Resonance. She also provides a ton of Pyro application, which is very useful for breaking some enemy shields. Keep in mind that she requires you to be pretty close to the enemy, which can be inconvenient and awkward to do with a ranged DPS like Wanderer. And lastly, for the shield options, you'll want to use Layla, Toma, or Zhongli. Layla results in overall the highest damage thanks to providing Cryo A1, and the slight buff she provides at C4. Ideally, you do want to have Layla at C6, as this speeds up her Cryo application and makes it much more consistent to get Cryo A1 with her. Toma is only slightly behind Layla, providing Pyro Resonance and a 15% damage bonus buff at C6. The shield will refresh even if it breaks, which can also be very useful against aggressive enemies, capable of easily breaking shields. Zhongli is lower damage than Layla and Toma, but he has the strongest shield. His resistance shred also gains value against highly anemo resistant enemies, which are not uncommon in the Abyss. Against such enemies, Zhongli will be the best shield option. So, to summarize, if you are using Farina, Wanderer's optimal team will be Wanderer, Baruzan, Farina, and either Bennett or Jean with Micah or Chila, Charlotte as the best alternatives. If you aren't using Farina, then Wanderer, Baruzan, Bennett, and the most optimal 4th slots ranging from Yunjin, Venti, Jin C4, Klee C2, or Layla, Toma, or Zhongli if you want to play with a shield. Wanderer's constellations are good if you desire to invest vertically into him. C1 provides highly valuable attack speed, not only increasing his damage, but also allowing him to get his A4 up more often, making him easier to play without a shield. C2 essentially doubles his burst damage as long as you do it at the end of his skill, thus turning it into a massive backloaded nuke. If you are looking for an early stopping point into Wanderer, this is the ideal place to stop. C3-5 to five aren't really recommended to aim for unless you plan to go all the way to C6. And then C6 is his best constellation by far. He gives all of his normal attacks a coordinated attack with 40% of the scaling of the original hit. Not only does this increase his normal attack damage by 40%, but it also allows him to get his A4 up after every N3 for extremely consistent dodges, and it gives him much more anemo application, making him very good at breaking elemental shields. So if you plan to invest into Wanderer's Constellations, aim for C1 or C2 if you don't want to go too deep, otherwise aim to C6 him over time. And that's everything you need to know to make your Wanderer feel like a god. If this video helped or entertained you at all, please like and subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below. Thanks. Goodbye.